don't be put off by the fact that you're applying as an international student. If you can be an international student, be an international student. If you experience so many new cultures, you meet so many new people, you'll get to live in a different city. It's great to study abroad. Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I have got Karma Bedek, who is my very special guest for the video. Hello. And we have got a collab plan together on Naz's channel and we are doing an interview on my channel today. And we were saying this off camera and I've been saying this to you for a while. So Naz is an international student yep. studying in the UK and I'll let you and I'll let you say a little bit about your story first. Sure. But I have so many questions because people ask me all the time, what's it like applying to a UK school as an international student. Right. So let's try and answer some of those. So do you want to tell them? I mean, most people you'll probably know who Nance is, but if you don't, for, the, for like the twelve of you who like don't know, do you want to give us a little <coughs> bit of an intro? Yeah. So hi, my name is Nasser Karma. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I was born in Vancouver, and then I grew up in Greece for most of my life. And both of my parents are from the Middle East. So I do consider myself quite an international person. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing my first degree in Toronto, in Canada, yeah. and now I'm studying medicine in the UK at King's College London. Okay, so I guess the first thing I want to know is why the UK? Because I know in Toronto, I guess the system's quite similar to America, where mm -hmm. you have to do like a couple of years of pre-med and then all medicine is postgraduate. How come you decided to choose the UK as opposed to any other school? Okay. Sell it to us. So, um, <laughs> So when I was in high school in Greece, mm -hmm. I applied to the UK for medical school the first time around, ah, okay. but I wasn't successful. And so my plan B was to go to Canada to mm -hmm. do my undergraduate degree and then apply for medicine again. Now when it came time to apply to medicine in my fourth year of my undergraduate degree, because yes. all the undergraduate degrees there are four years, not oh, three, yes, of course. I actually ended up applying to both Canada and the UK. Okay. And the reason I did that was basically I was like, I've been trying to get into medicine for so long and I mm -hmm. really want to be a doctor. Yep. So I'm just going to apply to all the schools that I possibly can, cast yep. my net far and wide, and that'll give me the best chances of getting accepted to medical school. So I ended up applying to a bunch of Canadian schools and then mm -hmm. a bunch of UK schools. And like I mentioned, the UK schools were always sort of plan A. And then when the acceptances and rejections came back, mm -hmm. I was rejected from everywhere in Canada. And mm -hmm. so I didn't really have a choice almost, like all the Canadian yeah. options were out of the picture. And so I had a bunch of UK options to choose mm -hmm. from and ended up choosing Kings. Okay, well amazing. So I know I've watched a couple of your videos where you said that the first time you were applying as an 18 year old mm -hmm. that you didn't take your UK cat that seriously, which by the way, your score was still like really good. The second um, time. No, no, the, <laughs> the, even second the first time, time no? Uh, the first time I scored like dead average. Okay. A little bit better, I believe, than average. Okay. Um, but nothing, nothing spectacular. What do you think helped you get in the second time round instead of the first time? Because UK school, medical schools are generally quite competitive. So mm -hmm. what do you think made you stand out the second time? I think the second time, it was two things. So mm -hmm. the first is the fact that over four years of university, over four years of life experience, four years of being able to do more volunteering, more shadowing yeah, experience, things like that. Mm -hmm. I personally knew that I wanted to be a doctor. And that was something that when I was younger, if someone would ask me, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? Yeah. I would say, oh, I want to be a doctor. Because, you know, that's what I was used to saying. Yeah. That's what I thought. I really loved science and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I didn't really understand what it meant. And yeah. then it was through the experiences that I gained over those four years that I sort of mm -hmm. realized this is truly what I want. Yes. And so I think that that's, that sort of shined through in my personal statement when I was yeah. talking about why I want to study medicine. And then on top of that, because I wanted medicine so bad, mm -hmm. I also ended up doing really well in my UK CAT because I prepared very well yeah. for it. Um, and so that must have helped as well. Um, and my grades from, from my Canadian university were also good. Yeah. So everything together. <laughs> <laughs> the success well, story. It just goes, yeah, exactly. And I was just about to say, it just goes to show, doesn't it, that like if you put your mind to something enough, then you can really get that. I so, really believe in that, yeah. Yeah, like, absolutely. Practice makes perfect, and hard work and dedication really does pay off. I do Tips. think so. Kids, take notes. <laughs> take notes. So I just want to like steer the conversation a little bit more um, towards the whole international thing to answer some okay. of our collective questions. Getting my notes because my memory is terrible. I know you said that you didn't necessarily have the choice of going to the Canadian schools and that you got accepted to King's, which is amazing. I'm happy yeah. because we got to meet. Um, but actually, let's just go back a few steps. So what was your application process like applying to a UK medical school as an international student? Because 
because I guess I can only talk on my behalf as a UK student. So were there any differences? Did you have to do any extra exams? How did okay. that all work? <laughs> um, so generally the application process is very similar. If you're mm -hmm. an international student or a domestic student, you still have to do the UK CAT, you still have to write a personal statement. What really changes is the competition rates. So how competitive yeah. it is to get in. Mm -hmm. So as an international student, there's a lot less places on the courses at medical schools. They have like a certain quota that they have to meet, but it's it's generally oh, quite see. low. Okay. And so I remember there's this there's this really useful PDF that tells you the applicants per place for each medical school mm -hmm. for domestic and international students. And so I remember for Bristol for international students the year that I applied, mm -hmm. it was like forty two point five applicants per place. And domestic was something like twenty. Okay. So you can see that the competition is okay, almost twice as high. So it makes it all the more important that when you apply, you apply based on your strengths to the universities. Yes. You apply to universities that mm -hmm. match that match your strengths in your mm -hmm. grades, in your personal statement, your experiences, things like that, so that you have the best chances of getting in. And do you think that there are certain medical schools that either like favor international students more than others perhaps? Or like depending on the quotas? What mm -hmm. would you say about this? Like, how did you choose the ones that you chose? And which ones did you choose, I think? Because I actually okay. can't remember this. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll start with the second question first. Mm -hmm. So the schools that I applied to were King's, Bristol, mm -hmm. Southampton, and Queen Mary's. Yes. It's okay. Queen Mary's, right? Not Queen's. Yeah, Queen's, Queen Queen's is in Canada. Yes. <laughs> Queen Mary's, yeah, I, I get them confused all the time. Bit. So yeah, Queen Mary's rejected me outright, and then King's and Bristol both gave me an offer, mm -hmm. and so I rejected the interview that I had for Southampton. And then from those schools, I chose them, not, none of them sort of said that they accept more international students or anything like that. Mm -hmm. From that PDF that uh, <laughs> I was looking at... I'll try and find it and link it. I'll, I'll link it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's really, really useful. So from that PDF, those were some schools that had better chances for international applicants. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't anything extremely drastic. Most of yeah. them were still in the super highly competitive range of like 38 to 43, I think was the general range. Okay. So I didn't choose my schools based on that, but I chose the schools based on, they all say on their website, you know, we're looking for this kind of work experience, this kind of applicant, we want to see this kind of thing in the personal statement. Mm -hmm. So those are the schools that I applied to based on tailoring my grades and my personal statement and everything, and based on my UK CAT score as well. So if I know I scored well in the UK CAT, and I know that certain medical schools weight the UK CAT more strongly in the application process, then obviously yes. that's going to be advantageous for me. No, definitely. And as, as, you were si as you were saying the names of the schools, I was like thinking, yeah, they are all universities that do value like the UK CAT quite highly. Mm -hmm. Do you think, I know you said that so there are certain quarters um, that you have to meet as international students, which is separate to, I guess, the home students. But, so when you compete, is it essentially the fact that you have to be, and I'm putting this in quotation marks, better than the home students, or do you just have to compete with the rest of the international students, if that makes sense? Because it yes. would be a bit disadvantageous if, like, I only needed to get a certain level and you had to work this much harder just to get in. I don't actually know 100%, mm. and I don't think universities really talk about that or publish that kind of information. Yeah, very but discreet. But if it's anything like the working life here in London, the job applications and things mm -hmm. like that, companies are legally required to hire UK or domestic student, right. sorry, citizens before yeah. they hire any internationals. And so that's kind of the assumption that I was going off of. Sure. I don't actually know 100%, mm -hmm. um, but I would think so. I would think that the international students need to meet a higher standard. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. So do you think, not that you regret it, but do you ever feel like you could have stayed in Canada? Because obviously your family's there, right? Uh, no, so oh, my family... Oh, oh okay, well, Stanner in the works. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of abrupt. No, so my family lives in Greece, okay. so they're actually a lot closer to me when I'm here. And my sister lives here. Right. My twin sister, uh, she lives and works in the UK. Of course, yeah. So from the family side, I'm a lot closer sure. when I'm here. Okay. And uh, it's a difficult question, do I have any regrets? Yeah. Because I really enjoyed my time in Canada, especially yeah. in the last two years. Mm -hmm. It sort of, it took a bit of time to get myself... Um, oriented to the new culture, mm -hmm. to find a good group of friends that I really enjoyed hanging out with, um, and I'm sure that's something that people experience yeah, at university. Yeah. I was really, really enjoying my time there, and it's difficult to say, should I have stayed, should I have not? In the end, I didn't have the choice, so I, I couldn't make that decision, mm -hmm. um, but I, I definitely miss the people there, I miss the friends that I made, and yeah. you know, you get used to a certain set of surroundings, certain mm -hmm. set of people, mm -hmm. but change is always good, I really believe that. Change, change is always good. Yeah, no, I yeah, I think that's a really really good answer. 
I think just uh, the reason why I'm asking is because obviously we're talking a lot about like the application process and how you know it can be a bit more tricky to get accepted to a UK school as an international student. The students who for example are outside of the UK right now and mm -hmm. want to come and study in London yeah. um, but for whatever reason they either don't get in or they don't have the means to. Okay. What would you say to those? If you don't have the means to, that's a very separate conversation. Mm. And if you do have the means to, or you aren't, or you do get accepted, cost is something definitely very big that you need to consider. Yeah. Um, of but if you want to get in the UK and you haven't been successful and you want to apply again, or if you're thinking about coming to the UK, my advice would be honestly to just go for it because that's another four schools that you can apply to. That's another four chances that you have to get accepted um, to medical yeah. school. And you really have nothing to lose. You yeah. fill out the application. It's um, not that expensive, relatively speaking, to maybe Canadian mm -hmm. applications or US applications. Oh, you fill out one central application, UCAS, mm -hmm. and you send it off and you have four more chances of getting accepted. So it's worth it. It's worth it. It is difficult and it is extra work, but in the bigger picture of things, it's uh, it's definitely something you should try and do if you can. Yeah, and that's a really good point. I didn't, I, I'm just being a bit slow today. It didn't even occur to me that, yeah, if you are applying to your own country or if you're applying mm -hmm. to several different places, then you are just giving yourself more options. So exactly, yeah. And if you it. choose the universities based on uh, what matches your application best, mm -hmm. then, you know, you increase your chances even more. Don't mm -hmm. apply blindly. Do, do really, really yes. good research to see yeah. where to apply. Is that something that you did as well when you were applying now? Um, well, this year definitely, but the first year when it was kind of just last minute, very mishap, just randomly applied to places. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I did have a look and thought, okay, well, this school needs a high A level in something. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. I mean, then again, I was also a little bit stuck because my admissions test scores were low. So Birmingham didn't have one. Lot, yeah. So yeah, exactly. But Fair enough. no, I totally agree. Okay, so let's see what other what other thing I've got jotted down. Jotted let's down. See. I mean. The thing is, a lot of the questions I've got here were, were kind of like, uh, like answered in discussion. Yeah. Right, so I mean, some of the things I was going to ask are, you know, the pros and cons of doing it here versus at home. So mm -hmm. I think you spoke about like missing your friends and like all of that kind of stuff, which it, it is a big thing because medicine is a long commitment, and it's you a want long to. Degree, yeah. For example, like now when I when I moved to the UK to study medicine. Had I not had, so my sister lives here and I live with my sister actually, so mm -hmm. that's really, really great. And also a lot of my high school friends who I studied with yeah. in Greece, they all either study or work here now. So if I didn't already have that sort of support network in place yeah. and I came here last year and didn't know anyone, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a bit of a scary time, you know? Yes. And the older you get, um, it becomes even more difficult, I feel. Yeah. You know, when you're 18 totally. and you're like a fresher, you can go and get mm. really drunk and party and meet lots of people. Mm. I mean, of course, you can still do the same as a 22-year-old, yeah. 23-year-old. But I feel like it becomes more and more difficult to make a new set of friends all over again. No, that's really true. And I guess going off on what you've just said, what, what are some of the challenges that you think you face just merely on the fact that you're an international student? Because, I mean, you are very fortunate. Like, it's really nice to have, like, a sister and everybody around. Yeah. But what did you personally experience and what could you, what have you learned that you could share? <laughs> I think, like, what I, another big thing when I came here was just a culture shock. Really? Like, I already had one culture shock when yeah, I went to Canada course. and now I had another one when I came here. Yeah. Every, everything is so different, you know, mm. like, I don't want to make many generalizations, but a lot of people that I've met here, you know, they were all raised a certain way. And I'm not saying that's better or worse than how I was raised. Mm -hmm. It's just a different way. Sure. And so, you know, it takes getting used to what, what sort of jokes do people make? What kind of food <laughs> do people like? Where do they like to go? What activities do they like to do? Yeah. You kind of have to start from the beginning, you know. Mm. And you can bring as much influence as you as you can into the group, right? But if there's like a group of 10 who only listen to, let's say, country yeah. music, which is not the case. Yeah. But let's say they only listen to country music and you really like disco and pop music. Mm -hmm. You can try and push that on them, but, yeah. you know, there's going to be some resistance there. <laughs> so. so this is actually funny because you always tell us, like whenever you and I and Kenji hang out as well, yeah. he does is always like telling us like, oh, I discovered this thing today or like... Oh, no. <laughs> It's really funny because... You're gonna make me blush more than I already am. <laughs> oh, by the way, can I just say an extra big thank you to you because before we started filming, Naz was like, I don't really like talking about myself that much, so let's quiz him for 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, no, but it's right. funny. It's it's a kind of thing where like... Yeah. It is funny. <laughs> it is It is funny, it is funny. I've, I've been really enjoying the slang. The slang of oh, the Oh yeah, what, what is some of your favourite slang? <laughs> 
Peng. I don't Peng even know what good. that is. I don't. I'm so uncool. Peng, Peng is like a good-looking guy or girl, I think. Okay. Oh man, everyone's gonna call me out <laughs> if, if, if I don't know what I'm talking Leave about. Leave in the comments below. <laughs> um, or you're just going to teach like loads of people like the wrong thing. Me teach people? No, I, I'm getting taught all the time. Um, so yeah, Peng, Peng butters, which is like a really, really mean one. Does that um, mean someone's ugly? Yes. I thought that I never was American. Use that ever, by the way. I okay. It's a, I find someone it's like a butters. horrible thing. Yeah. Um, I can't think of it. What was the other thing then? Um, I, think, I didn't even know this. Like the word buff. Yes. I thought buff meant somebody who's like fit as an in shape. Yes. But you were saying that buff could actually mean someone who's like really good looking. Yes. Here. I thought I Three. thought it used to be uh, used to mean like you know, muscly, you're in shape. You're muscly. Like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. what I thought it meant. But there is yeah, a go. lot of double meanings. Like peak, <laughs> that's so peak. Which doesn't make sense, by the way, because peak is like the peak of a mountain. <laughs> Things should be good, that's not so bad. Um, it doesn't mean bad. I thought it meant good. No. I'm so Am I good. wrong? Yeah, I have I to Google know. this now. Or like, or like when <laughs> people say, sure. that's sick. That's sick is a good thing. That's a good thing. That's good. See, that's but you don't want to be sick because uh, then you have to see doctors. <laughs> yeah. You come see us. <laughs> okay. Peak, so yeah, when, something, when something bad happens, peak. That's it makes weird. no sense. I know, I know. English well, language is, is strange. Well, there you but go. it's funny. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> so it's, you're it's having fun an to education. Learn. How's your sister been finding it? She's she. I mean, you're a twin, so it's like if you want to do like <laughs> studies, like <laughs> yeah. Like... She uh, she moved here in 2013. Okay, okay. So she's so been she's here a long time. Ties. She's like fully English now. Like has a slight <laughs> English accent. Full group of English friends, and she she's converted. <laughs> She's oh, left no. us, um, so yeah, she's fully English now. <laughs> and can you see yourself, I guess, living in London full time? Full time? What am full I talking time. about? In the future. Full time, <laughs> in the future. Um, yeah, can you see yourself living in London? Or... Excuse me. It's, I mean, you've travelled so much. Mm -hmm. Would you want to settle here? Or is there a part of you that thinks I would like to go and go to another country and experience life there a bit more? Or what yeah. do you think? So by the time I finish medicine here, I'll have done mm -hmm. five years. And then I'll have another two years of foundation training. Yes. yes Assuming yes. I do the full two years. Mm -hmm. Even if I just do one, then I've been here for six years. Yeah. And that's a long time. It is a long time. Um, I don't know. I feel like I would want to move to have a change. Yes. Um, but it's so difficult to know from now. You don't know the situation of the NHS. You don't know Brexit. Yeah. You don't know oh, what gosh. it'll be like for internationals yeah. living and yeah. working here. Mm -hmm. So things are bound to change. And then on top of that, like I'm not a UK citizen, so I'm mm -hmm. considered a foreigner here. Whereas in Canada, it's considered my home country because I was yeah. born there. I was born in Vancouver. Sure. And there's there's so many advantages and disadvantages to leaving or staying, and it's hard to know from now. Mm -hmm. But what I do know for sure is that I hate the tube. <laughs> I, I absolutely <laughs> despise the tube. It's I could I could I could rant about the tube. All day long. Really? See, I actually don't mind it. Why? What do you have against the shoe? It's fast, it's efficient. Start? People don't talk to each other, which is a definite plus for me because in the well, morning I do not want to talk to people. I want to talk to people and I want to really? meet people, yeah. No, I just like, I'm one of those people that when I get on the tube, I'm like, okay, I just want to get from A to B, don't make eye contact because <laughs> then I'll have to look. Do you know what it is? I, I joke about this all the time. I think it's because I'm originally from the north of the UK. Okay. Where you know, you walk down the street and I'm not saying this is a bad thing by the way, but you can literally end up having like a 30 minute conversation with an old, like an elderly lady mm -hmm. who's like walking a dog. Yeah, or you can like... That's what Canada's like. That's a good that's thing, what I love except... About Canada, when you're in a rush. Which is always. <laughs> <laughs> which is always, yes. Do you wear headphones? Yeah. That's very key. It's like yeah, a signal. It's, it's like, like a, a signal, warning signal, like... you know? Yeah. No, but like I have... People know. No, but that's the thing. Like, if I, even if I have my headphones up in the north, like, there are definitely times where, like, someone will come over and then they'll just start talking at me. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> lady, listen to my headphones. Okay, no, this is just like an education on how antisocial the two says. <laughs> but no, go on, tell us. Why do you hate the tube? <laughs> why do I hate the tube? All right, so like you mentioned, it's fast, it's efficient, mm -hmm. which is good. It moves millions and millions of people a day. Like, I can't fault it for that, okay? But except for when they go on strike. Except for when they go on strike, and you pay an extortionate amount to use the tube. Okay. Yeah. And they strike, yes, and there's yeah. delays, yeah. and fair enough, I get it. Delays happen. These are all unfortunate circumstances, but like, you're paying so much money. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. That's not even, that's not even my biggest. Deal. <laughs> my most annoyed, why I'm most annoyed at the tube is that you waste so much time. Yeah. Like, I feel my life leaving my body when I'm on the tube. Really? You know, I could be filming a video in that time, Aww. I could be working on my school, I could be playing basketball, but instead, you know, you're stuck in the tube. Okay. I feel like if, uh, like in Toronto, for example, it was also a huge city, <laughs> so okay? Yeah. It, was, it was massive, but you could walk places. 
you can't mm -hmm. walk anywhere here. You have to take the tube. Yeah. And then cars. Bus is fine. I love the bus. Whenever I can Me take too. the bus, I take the bus. Scenic. Scenic. Um, you get some air. You can see outside the mm -hmm. window. It's some of my favorite times. Um, but you can't drive. It's like way too expensive. Yeah. Congestion charges, parking, time. Mm. Yeah, so there we go. So the, the fun transport yeah, of London. Fun transport. The, the, I have noticed the one thing about London though is like because it's such a big city, mm -hmm. um, you have to just commute everywhere. I know what you mean, like my undergraduate experience was so different because, you know, you're just more compact and that's really nice. Well, okay, so uh, for any international students wanting to come to the UK... Think about the tube. Get a bike! <laughs> <laughs> or like... Or get a bike. Yeah, or like get a skateboard or something. But it's like raining that, so. half the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, how's I'm, I'm the weather? I'm complaining a lot about London. Uh, I don't hate London, but yeah. Disclaimer. A disclaimer. Karma Medic does and not Karma hate London. London. Headlines tomorrow. Just kidding. Get that on the t-shirt. <laughs> coming soon. Merch coming soon, exactly. I would wear that. I would wear a t-shirt that says Karma Medic. Karma hates London. Because no one would know what it means, and I'd be like, I'm part of an exclusive club. <laughs> <laughs> go embarrassing me on video. <laughs> Guys, yeah, this is great. Guys, go and comment on like all of Naz's videos. Oh, Karma medicates London. <laughs> Please do it, it'll be great. <laughs> have fun, have oh, well, fun. I'm looking forward to this, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Alright, well, let's rein it in because we're just going to like end up ranting about Ready? London. So, to finish off, to finish off, what advice or what multiple num numerous pieces of advice would mm. you give to students who are international and mm. want to come and study in the UK maybe specifically London <coughs> but just generally UK what would you tell them first thing is what I said before which mm -hmm. is definitely apply don't yeah. don't be put off by the fact that you're applying as an international student don't <coughs> be put off by the fact that competition rates are higher mm -hmm. yes those things are true but it's still worth applying you really don't have much to lose um, and you might get in. If you get in, then you're golden. That's that's all you need. You just need one acceptance. Exactly. Other than that, I would say it's great to study abroad. Like, mm -hmm. if you can be an international student, be an international student. Mm -hmm. Like, you experience so many new cultures, you meet so many new people, you get to mm -hmm. live in a different city. And, of course, you have independence from your parents and things like that, but you might get that as well if you're domestic. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just, it's a great experience. If you can study abroad, study mm -hmm. abroad. Yeah, okay. so I'd highly recommend it. Nice. Okay then, I guess we can finish it off from there. And thank you so much for being on my channel. Thank you this for having was me on. so fun. <laughs> so we have got a lot of other videos planned to yeah. make in the future. So stay tuned. Go and check Naz out. He makes amazing content. And cheers. See ya. Bye. <laughs>